everybody, it's Jenny here from Moon Cusser Art. Welcome back. I'm going to be working on this round canvas I picked up. I don't even remember where I picked it up. I bought two of them. They were 50% off and, you know, sounded like a good deal. It's wood and this is a wood trim around the outside because they are two separate parts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Mod Podge. I'm going to apply that around the edge because I don't want any resin to leak out. So that'll create a seal there. So let's get going by putting that on. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, why use Mod Podge instead of resin if you're going to be creating a resin project? Well, the main answer is it's very inexpensive. You can buy a bottle of this at Walmart and it'll go for a long way. The other reason why I'm working with the Mod Podge is because this is a wood panel and wood is going to be porous and I want to seal it down so that I don't get air bubbles releasing into my resin as I create this project. So it's inexpensive, it dries quick and it does the job perfectly. The next thing that I want to do is it's all about prep. It's going to get a background painted on. This is done with some blue from Apple Barrel, which is a paint from, again, Walmart. Very inexpensive and some Artists Loft Flow Acrylic White blended in with the blue. Now we're getting ready here to start with the resin. We'll be using Artistry Epoxy. It's a new resin for me to try out. And this is their countertop variety. I'm also using Art Tree Creations, their gel pigment, Cobalt Blue, Flow Art Resin Blue, Flow Art White. I'll be using Color Arts Resin Art Pigments, Belize Blue, and Mystic Primrose. And maybe we'll use some of the pearlescent ink. I've got some sand and some shells ready, so let's get started. All right, so let's take just a minute here to talk about Artistry Epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. I always begin by putting the hardener in my cup first, and I have a really crystal clear cup. I've marked it out for equal parts of the hardener and the resin. So I'm just gonna fill my cup up to those lines. This is a very thick viscosity. It has no VOCs which is a volatile organic compound, so that's good. I do wear gloves and I do wear a full-faced ventilator when I'm working with any resins. So here I'm adding in the resin, it drops down through the hardener. The reason why I add the hardener first is it's a thinner viscosity, so it makes mixing it and blending it a little bit easier. And it takes, uh, this took me about three to four minutes to combine the two parts and you can see how it starts to clear as I know that it's fully combined. All right, we're starting with the blue, the Flow Art Epoxy Resin color from the Epoxy Resin store. Uh, as you can see, as I'm pouring out some of the first resin here, this is very thick. It moves very slowly, but I'm excited about that because that means I'm gonna get some good lacing. Obviously, this is gonna be a water piece, and if you haven't figured that out already, but you can see that it's getting really slow. This has a work time of about 40 minutes, and I have to use my popsicle stick to bring it right to the edge, but that blue is really a nice dark blue. I'm thinking about adding the cobalt here, but I still want to get some more of this blue. So I'm leaving gaps and spaces because everything's going to get blended in. And again, it's very thick, so I go and get my serrated edge spreader so that I can help move that around on the board. If you don't have one of these, see if you can find one online and pick one up. It is a handy tool. All right, now we'll start adding in that Art Tree Creations Cobalt Blue, which is a gel, and it's very transparent, and that's the reason why I painted the background there. Spreads out, and now I'll add the Color Arts Resin Art 
Belize Blue. And this is yet another cup of the Cobalt Blue from Art Tree Creations. It's just mixed up a little bit more intense. So I'm getting varying shades of blue across this canvas. Okay, now it's time to add the white. This is going to be my beach area. So I'm putting the white in there. And I went off and grabbed a silicone brush that I have. This is called a Catalyst brush and it's by Princeton. And these are terrific in resin because once the resin is cured and dried, it pops right off. And we'll just fill in with some clear so that we get it all the way covered. Popsicle stick it out and then use the heat gun to start warming the resin up and popping bubbles. And then we're going to switch over to a different end for the heat gun. This is a fanned out blade. It's about three inches wide and it really disperses the resin across your panel nicely. Adding a few more details of color there and then pushing out the white to start creating a little bit of waves out in the deeper water. Now, don't panic. I'm going to get in a little bit closer. You can see I just got a little bit of smoke up off of the resin. I've been working with this resin for 40 minutes, 45 minutes now, and it's starting to really thicken and become uh, very volatile. And when you start applying too much heat, that's when you're going to get puffs of smoke coming up. So now we're going to lay out a nice heavy ribbon of clear right up along that white. Okay. And this is the part where we're going to look at how to make the lacing for ocean waves. So I also come back then and put down a heavy ribbon of the white. And again, this is the Flow Art White. It's my favorite white. It's a nice bright white. And it really works well for getting that wave lacing that we all love so much in resin. So I heat it up with the torch and then I come in and I take that fan blade and push out the resin. So as you push it across the clear, it starts to give the cell action. You see how coming in after you spread it out with the heat gun and then you hit it with the torch. So you spread it out and then you give it some blast. And you can see again, I've been working with this for a long time and too much heat and you start seeing the smoke and you'll see it flame up a couple of times. I'm pushing this resin to its limit. This is about where you got to start quitting. Just a few more spots here. Stretch that out. And this corner is really smoking up. You can see it's even starting to turn the white resin brown. All right. Oh, there's a big puff. Okay, it's time to stop with that. <laughs> All right, I grabbed a toothpick and I'm just teasing at the white around. I want it to completely come up here. Just like that. And now it's time to start placing a few of the shells in. Now I want them to kind of be embedded into the sandy beach. So that's why I put them down first. And now I'm building up with the coarse sand over top. This is from the Michael store and it's Ashland coarse sand. And just cover that good and we'll call it a day. Good morning, everybody. I'm back down into the studio. I have this really, I'm very happy with the blues, how they turned out. You can see the sand buried some of those shells in the sand which is the look I was going for there. We'll be putting on another layer of the artistry resin and looking forward to doing that because that should be my final coat. And I wanted to stop and show you guys a little tidbit of info for you. So yesterday when I was starting to uh, batch up my colors I had the Artistry Primrose, Mystic Primrose, Color Arts Resin Art Luster Pigment. And this puddle was made with a different brand of resin and it came out very blue. 
And yesterday, when I was batching, I put in the color and I could see on the edges of my cup that it was very purple. So there is a purple undertone and I did not want that happening in this piece. So I decided to not use it. It is a lovely color though. Isn't that pretty? Very nice. But you can see as the light flashes, you can pick up that purple, right? It'd be better there. There you can see it's got that purple tint to it. So, you know, when you look at it in comparison to the two, if you, yeah, there you go. There you can really see the color differences. So depending on the makeup of the resin, it's going to change the color. So although this is pretty, I didn't want a purple tint. I wanted something blue. So what I ended up doing was I used these two. I already had a cup of the Flow Art, the blue, and that was already mixed up because that was going to be my primary color. I grabbed some of my Black Diamonds Iridescent Blue and I batched that up into the cup, but you can see this one has almost a, just a touch of a greenish blue color to it. Not much, but it's a pretty iridescent. So I grabbed that one and then I added a little bit of the blue from my blue cup and I came up with, let's find it here. That was the color that I poured in here. Okay. So, you know, nothing's ever written in stone around here. We just kind of work on the fly. So that's that. Those are those two things I wanted to show you. And then I wanted to also show you this real quick. So this is a plastic spreader that you can use to get your resin thinly spread out. And yesterday I batched up a total of 15 ounces of the artistry resin. And it was a little on the thin side, but definitely covered. And that's fine. But I wanted to show you, I have people ask me from time to time, well, how do you clean up your tools? Well, guess what? This is plastic. I think I got this a long time ago when I was using uh, art resin and it just pops right off the plastic. So I just place this back down on my tabletop and all these things, they just come right off and get onto this side. So you can see it just easily comes off. Just like that okay so you can clean up plastic tools easy and then this one this one i use to spread the white it's a catalyst brush from by princeton and this one is made out of silicone here on the end so same thing i just leave it laying on the table and all this comes right off Boink. Okay, now if I use something that I need to get it off of right away, then I'll use a uh, paper towel soaked in uh, alcohol, and that works really well too, but I don't really have that much of a use for those things. So anyway, I wanted to stop and just show you that. So let's get back to working on this piece. All right, so now it's time to clean up this loose sand on the beach, because obviously... We don't want loose sand. So my trick is a vacuum cleaner and a knee high stocking. I don't know guys, maybe you guys steal one from the girlfriend or the wife, but this is what works good. So I'm gonna let the vacuum suck that up and then I'm gonna put a tip on and we'll clean up that. My camera angle isn't that great for getting the pantyhose into the vacuum, but I did. And I turn it on and saving your ears by not having the sound on, but I just go around and get all that sand sucked up into the pipe of the vacuum cleaner and it all collects inside the pantyhose. And when I'm all done, I can take that piece off the top, 
the attachment. And I'm going to pull out the pantyhose. And it's stretched way down in there, but once it's all out, you can see there's quite a bit of sand collected there. Right, I have 14 ounces of artistry epoxy. Most of it is clear. I do have some tinted up as the cobalt and also a little bit more of the Belize blue for a little bit of sparkle there. And especially the white. I'm using the Flow Art White again, and that's what's giving me this fantastic lacing. Again, same as yesterday, putting down a line of clear, a little bit of blue, and then the white, and blow it out. Now you see I have more defined tip that I'm using today too. It gets covered, and we'll see it tomorrow. All right, everybody. We are going to wrap this piece up, which looks fantastic. I love the sparkling sand. It's a nice bright white. I'm over at the art table with this piece. See how good we can get a zoom in on some of the waves. Pretty good. It's so hard to pick up the depth in these pieces. It's one of the reasons why I like to work in a couple of layers. If you guys can spot the shadows that are coming in here. Let's see if I zoom in. There you go. See those shadows? Love it. There's some really nice pearlescent going on in here variations in the color. It all works pretty darn nice. So I'm liking how it's turning out so far. Like I said, I've got a couple of pieces of shells here in the sand. I'm going to be adding some more. I have a collection over here. I'll be using the Artistry Epoxy again. And I wanted to stop and video at this point for you guys because this is, again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio resin. It has a couple of really great things about it. Uh, one of them is it has no VOCs, no volatile organic compounds. So I do wear a mask. I do wear my gloves. And that's really important when you're working with resin. You want to have good ventilation in your room as well. You want your room temperature to be about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that translates into for Celsius, but that's what I work on in my studio area here. I am going to be batching up this one-to-one -one ratio resin. Normally, I measure my equal equivalents with water, and I only need a little bit to attach the shells to the beach area. So I have this little measuring cup. It's a very small amount, but what I'm going to do is I will measure my hardener first. I will measure one full cup of the hardener. I will scrape it out really carefully, putting it into my mixing cup here, which is a little plastic mouthwash cup. And then once it's all cleaned out with alcohol, then I will measure the resin part A, the epoxy, to get the equal amount and scrape that really carefully in there. So you can measure by using measuring cups or tablespoons, but you want to be really careful when you're measuring in small amounts that you get equal quantities when you're doing a one-to-one -one ratio. That's really, really important in working in small quantities. So let's get that batched up and we'll start attaching these starfish and some of the shells. Hey guys, totally embarrassing. My light crept into the camera. Can't believe it. Rah.
Okay, so, you know, everything's placed out and uh, I might add a couple more shells here and there, but here comes my, my lamp again, creeping into the picture very, very slowly. I'm going to have a talk with it. Well, here it is, guys, Belize Blues. It's a beauty. I loved working with the Artistry Epoxy. The countertop formula is very thick. That's what you want. If you're going to try to get some ocean wave lacing like this, you want a thick resin. It's going to spread out and it's going to make that lacing spectacular. The Belize Blue from Color Art is fantastic in this piece, as well as the Flow Art Blue from the Epoxy Resin Store. Everything will be listed in the description box if you want to check it out. And thanks for watching here on Mooncusser Art. See you next time.